Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Ted with What's My Gear. So today we're gonna to be talking about our mouse-proof RV. And what's interesting is, as far as I'm aware, you can't go buy a mouse-proof RV. So what you've gotta do is you've gotta modify the RV so that mice cannot get inside. And that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today. First, I'll go over the materials that we're gonna use. I'll start at the bottom of the frame, work my way up, and kind of show you everything I did to eliminate all mouse entry points. And so let's take a quick look at the materials you're gonna need before we get started. So I'm gonna apologize right off the bat because I am missing some of the material. I used it up during the project, it was a long time ago, and I don't have any left. So I'll be listing them out as well so that you don't miss everything that you need. So one of the things I do have here today is the contour gauge. I've got two different size contour gauges and the tin snips, as well as some earth magnets. Now, I'm gonna not recommend that you buy earth magnets this large. These are about 30 pounds of force per magnet. I think that half that, or maybe even a little bit less, may work for you, but for me, these were way too strong. And most importantly, we have our perforated aluminum. It's got little holes in it, it won't rust and it's perfect for what we're gonna be doing. And let's cover some of the things that we don't have here. You're gonna need silicone, expanding foam, hose clamps, and a marker. I'll link the products that I used. I'm not saying you have to use those exact brands, but all I can tell you is what I used and what worked for me. So you'll sort of have to decide if you wanna go that route or another route. Okay guys, some of these shots are gonna be a little bit hard to get. I'm gonna do the best I can. There's essentially five different solutions that I've used depending on the problem I'm solving. So the first one is gonna look like this. Okay, and this is where you're gonna have the aluminum sheet silicone and adhered to the frame of the RV. The idea here is we're trying to fill gaps that normally would be right where my finger is going around the metal fixtures that hold the arms on for the slides and, and other things like that. Okay, so what I did was I came under here with my contour gauge and pushed up on it to create the contour of the metal housing that I need to cut around. And when you pull the gauge away, you've got the shape that you need. And so what you'll do is lay this on the uh, aluminum sheet, draw out your template with a marker, and when you cut it out, uh, like I ended up just doing a rectangle here, you can then slide that piece underneath the metal housing and silicone it to the frame. And I used these magnets to hold it to the frame while the silicone dried. I just left them up there uh, after it dried. I could take them down if I wanted, they're not needed anymore. The other thing you're gonna need to do is um, you're gonna have to do it twice for every housing you want to seal because I can only get the bottom half with one piece of aluminum, then I can get the top half with another piece. So you'll come back here, you'll reset your gauge, and you'll get another contour from the top. So the second style of solution is gonna be really similar to the first, except for it's removable. So I'm not siliconing it to the frame, so let's take a look. Okay, so the second style is this removable style. So this is where I can actually pull one of these off and there's a magnet held inside the folds of the aluminum. The tape's actually just holding the folds together. The magnet is held in there strongly by the aluminum being folded over itself. The idea here is that this tube connected to the slide will actually move up and down as the slide goes in and out. So you need something like this that can kind of flex and flow and move with the slide as it goes. As far as I'm aware, this tube is the only thing that moves like that when the slide goes in and out, so it's the only place where I needed a removable solution for this aluminum sheeting. Another benefit is that you can take both of these off if you don't want them to be on when you've shut your slide in all the way, and that way there's nothing in here impeding the slide from closing all the way. Now, as you can tell, there's some brass coloring on there, because what I'm gonna show you over here is there's a flange that actually seals that hole up. Okay, and this is the flange I was talking about. When the slide closes, this makes a seal around that hole in the frame. You don't actually need 
the mouse proofing when the slide is closed. And so for me, a lot of times I forget and I leave this sheet attached to the frame. It's not a big deal. All that happens, you could probably see it here, where it's sort of been pressed in. It's sort of been form fitted around this flange because I've forgotten I've left this on a bunch of times. And at the end of the day, it's so thin, it doesn't prevent the slide from closing. So for me, a lot of times I just decide to leave it on. That said, I've also verified that the slide closes on this without any obstructions and I've watched really closely and I've gotten really comfortable with it on my RV. On yours it may be a different story where uh, you know it might clip the magnet or something in there might not sit right and you may really want to remove these before you close the slide so that'll sort of be up to you. Okay so we're gonna head over to solution type 3 where I'm using that rodent resistant expanding foam like you can see here, all this yellow. And basically what we did was anywhere there was a gap that you really can't fill with the aluminum sheet, we'd spray this foam in there and seal it off from mice. So you're gonna have to go over the entire RV, top to bottom, and look for gaps like that. A couple places to point out, on your slide arms, at the end here, you could see there's gonna be little holes. This is where you know a mouse could crawl in here, get through the arm, and go right into the underbelly of your camper into that cavity that we're trying to seal off. And look, you could even see here, another set of gaps that we found. So I probably spent like eight hours going through this thing. Look, there's some there underneath in the back, looking for places that have gaps and you've really got to fill them all. Anything you don't fill is a potential uh, entry point for mice. And in places where you have wires, we went ahead with the foam and not the aluminum because the frayed aluminum could cut the wires or damage the wires over time. When you think you've found all the gaps and all the holes under your RV, you likely haven't. And uh, I would have to go back under, but from a different angle, position myself differently, look at things differently, and every time I went back under, I found something else, even after I thought I got everything. So that would just be my only recommendation there is uh, inspect with a fine tooth comb to make sure you've got all the gaps and all the holes that you feel like are big enough for a mouse to get through. And I've heard that mice can get through sometimes holes as small as the diameter of a pencil. So I don't, I'm not an expert in that area, but I just kind of went with that rule of thumb. Okay, so for this one, we've got to get a little bit lower. Right here is the vent below your batteries. And basically all we did was we took that aluminum sheet, we made a square out of it and cut the corners. Then you could just bend the sides over the pipe and that's where the hose clamps come into play. You could tighten down those hose clamps and seal off that vent so mice can't get in. So now we're gonna go under the front of the RV where the kingpin is over to our garage. So it's just the forward storage compartment that I call the garage. So what this is solving is filling the gap around the uh, stabilizer arms. So this is just a housing. The arm goes inside, so this is not gonna move. It's stationary. So we went with the approach of, you know, again, taking your, your contour gauge, pushing it onto the arm, and then cutting out this aluminum piece. And as you can see, it's just siliconed right to the base. I've got the magnet on there, which held it while the silicone dried, and I just left the magnet on there. But now, mice cannot fit through that hole. Before we leave this forward storage area, I just kind of wanted to show you, you want to make sure you look for entry points from this storage compartment into the main cavity below the RV and seal those off as well. And so the last thing for the storage compartment is sealing the walls where they meet the frame, going all the way up, all the way to the ceiling. And that sort of makes this compartment its own sealed off cavity. Okay, so we're heading inside and here's where we're gonna be using a combination of the silicone and the expanding foam. And we're going to be filling the gaps between where the slides meet the wall, as well as the plumbing meeting the floor. Okay, so I've got a slide pulled all the way in so that we can see that, look, when they cut holes in the side of your RV, to fit the slide in, 
it's not going to be perfect. So you're going to have these gaps in here and they're going to be different sizes all the way around. You're going to want to fill those gaps. What I did was I hit them with silicone first in the deepest areas where they'd meet like the outside uh, molding and things like that. Then I filled the majority of the cavity with the foam. I do think the foam adds maybe a certain degree of thermal barrier as well. It's no longer an air cavity and it's sealed. Okay, so the last place are gonna be things like your plumbing fixtures going into the floor. So I know there's other options like steel wool. I just didn't wanna deal with it falling out or rusting down there. So I just went ahead and filled it with the foam. And so far it's worked out well for us. Okay, so I wanted to touch on this uh, expanding foam. It's something you really have to watch out for. When you're in a house or something and you're applying it to a wall, it's gonna fall to the floor, not a big deal. When you are underneath the RV and that foam falls, it's gonna be falling into your eyes, your hair, your face, and it's really dangerous. So the only thing I can say there is follow the manufacturer's recommendations, be very cognizant of the safety concerns and just know that it's a different situation when you are underneath this chemical versus in front of the chemical. If you get some on your hands and it dries, I know from experience, when you peel it off, the skin comes off with it. It's not something I'd even want to imagine what could happen if it got in your eye. So again, please be careful with it and follow the manufacturer's recommendations and just know what you're getting into before you start doing. So I hope everyone got something out of the video. Look, one of my goals is to make sure that I'm sharing knowledge and also learning from you. If there's things that you wanna share, please leave them in the comments below. I read them and I do get value out of it and I know that other people watching the video will as well. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you like the video so that you can get more tips like this. And that's all I have today. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.